Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey and these are my top 10 tips for A-level pure maths exams. Now these tips are non-example specific, so you can use them for any pure A-level maths exam. Let's get into it and remember to stick around to the end because I've got a bonus tip, so it's actually 10 plus a bonus one. Happy days, let's do get it. into it. Tip number one, if part A is a show that, it means that part B, you can smash that. Don't give up on a question if the first part is tricky, you can still access the second part. For example, let's look at this question here. Part A is fairly straightforward, but part B is really tricky. So much so that I've done a, a video on this tr question. You can watch it here, do give it a go. But part B is so difficult that most students give up and they don't even look at part C. Where part C is just literally solve a quadratic and then substitute your value back into the original equation. Just like you're solving a quadratic simultaneous equation uh, in GCSE, this is exactly the same difficulty and it's for four marks as well. Tip number two is make sure that you revise as much as you can and you cover everything in your exam specification. I made a video where I go over everything which you need to memorize for your A-level pure exam. Give that a watch and make sure you feel really confident when you go into that first exam that you know everything that you possibly can because A-level pure, all the questions link into one another. So if you can master all the topics, you're gonna to be in a really good position. Tip number three, make sure that you give your answer in the exact form that the question asks for. So this question here, it says state the set of possible values of K. And if I give my answer as an inequality, such that K is between five and 11, then I'm gonna lose my final accuracy mark because it's asked for the set. So I have to give my answer in set notation. So I open up curly brackets, I write K colon, and then I write that K is between five and 11. And say for example, the question uh, gave us values of K which were unbounded, such that K was less than five and K was greater than 11, then we have to give it in this form where we open up those curly brackets again, we write k less than five, union, open up the curly brackets, k greater than 11. Okay, let's move on to the next example. And here we're asked to find the exact form. Now, this actually gives me an idea of what method to use for this question. Because if I start going down the cosine and then area of a triangle formula, then I'm gonna get decimals essentially in my answer. So that's not gonna give me an exact form. Instead, what I've got to do is use a little bit of a geometry hack, chop the rhombus up into four little triangles and work out the base and the height of these triangles and then multiply through by four. Okay, next question, it asks for position vector and I see students a lot of the time write those as coordinates or vice versa. Remember, position vectors are columns, coordinates are rows. Next question, and I've made a mistake on this myself, when it asks for thousands of Bs in the question. Now, if I was just to sub in T equals zero initially, then I would get an answer of 265. But because the question says that Bs are measured in thousands, it means the actual answer is 265,000. Uh, next question, I see this one, I see students make mistakes all the time on this. It's fairly straightforward to sub in the values and to find values for A and B, but the question asks us to find a complete equation of the model. So just writing down A and B will not get you the accuracy marks. You must substitute it into the formula and write it as the complete equation that they ask for. Next question, and this moves me on to tip number four, and that is evaluate the model, those pesky little two markers at the end of a question. Now, if I'm trying to evaluate a model, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to wanna to find out the predicted value that the model gives, which in this case is that the maximum theta temperature is 69.6, and the actual value of the boiling point, which in this case we're told is 78, and I want to work out what is the percentage error between my model and my exact value. Now, in this question, I get a percentage area of about 11%, and to me, that means the model is not a good model. It's not reliable. You're looking for percentage error to be less than 5% for, us, for it to be deemed a good model. And moving on, next question, it asks us to find the limitations of the values of T. 
Now, if I'm trying to find a limitation, I'm trying to look for the values of t where the model fails. So if I read the context of the question, we have a balloon which is deflating. And obviously, a balloon's radius cannot be negative. So we need to solve to find the time at which the radius becomes negative. And that is therefore a limitation of the model. Tip number five, and that is show your working. Now I know over the past 13 years, every teacher you've had has told you to show your working. But please, it is so important in your final A-level exam. And the reason is, just remember, how many times have you got an exam back from your teacher and queried a mark and the teacher say, uh, oh, maybe I should have given it to you, but your working wasn't clear, I wasn't sure. Examiners are human and they will miss marks if your working is not clear and set out. And you don't want to have to go through the whole remark process if you miss your grade. So please show your working in a nice, clear, concise manner so that the examiner has no choice but to give you those extra marks. Tip number six, let's get tricky with it. No, not funny. You want to make sure that your calculator is in degree or radian mode. I know it's a classic and I'm sure you won't forget this, but do not make that mistake and lose a silly mark because your calculator is in the wrong setting. Now here are some quick hacks for trigonometry. The first one is if you're trying to work out r sine x plus alpha or r cos x plus alpha, just make sure that the two trig functions, the sine and the cos, are lined up in the correct way. So if you are converting to r sine, then make the sine x coefficient the a and the cos x coefficient the b. And if you're converting to r cos, make the cos x coefficient the a and the sine x coefficient the b. Completely ignore the plus or the minuses, it doesn't make a difference. And then the r value is the square root of a squared plus b squared, and the alpha value is tan to the minus 1 of b over a. It works every time. You don't need to expand out the compound angle formula. You can do this question literally in 30 seconds. Don't waste any more time on it. Okay, the next hack is the cast diagram. I know not everyone likes it or not everyone uses it, but if you are solving a trig equation, you must know your second values. So if I'm solving for sine, I get my first value from my calculator. My second value is pi minus or 180 minus. And then once you have your first and your second values, you can then just add 360 or take away 360 to both of those values to get more and more values. And of course, if you're using tan, the second is pi plus, And if you're using cos, the second is 2 pi minus. Tip number seven, be a formula book merchant. Know exactly where all the formulas are. For Edexcel, there are only three pages that you really need. So know exactly what is on the formula booklet and what isn't so that you can use it to your advantage and you can use it speedily. Tip number eight, calculator. First off, make sure you bring spare batteries into your exam. You don't want them running out on you. That would be absolute disaster. Secondly, if you have the Casio CG50, then lucky you, make sure you use it to your advantage, know all of the features. This video is not going to be long enough for me to go over all of the intricacies and how great the calculator is. I'll save that for another time and I will link it. But you should master that calculator and use it to your advantage. Tip number nine, timings. For Edexcel, you have 100 marks and you have 120 minutes. That means every mark should take you about 1.2 minutes. So stick to that and don't go over it. If you're feeling like you're getting bogged down on a question, move on and come back to it. It's amazing how our minds are able to go back to a question and see it in a new light and be able to then tackle it at a different perspective and come up with the correct answer. Don't get bogged down. You don't have the time. It will be time pressured, but stay calm and be tactical with which questions you ask and which questions you skip and leave to the end. Save time for checking. About 10 minutes just for you to go back over every question and check all the algebra, because if you've made a little mistake there, you're going to lose the accuracy marks and you can literally save yourself three, four, maybe five, six, seven, eight. Who knows how many marks you could save yourself? So do spend time going over it. And also, 
After every question's finished, once you feel like you've got the right answer, make sure that you sense check it. Is it actually something which is going to be a reasonable answer? Does it feel a bit booky? If, it, if it's an exact answer question and you've got a decimal, you know that you need to go back and you need to try and look at it again. So tip number 10 is stay fresh, stay healthy throughout this exam period. Eat, sleep, revise, repeat. You don't need to do anything else. Lay off the monsters and the relentlesses and the Red Bulls. Try and stay fresh, drink water. What I used to do is on the morning of my exam, I would always walk to school rather than get the bus. And that really helped me clear my mind of anything that would be stressing me out. And it would give me lots of oxygen to my brain so I could really focus on what I had to do in that exam. And here it is, my final tip, my bonus tip. And it's a good one, most important you might say. And that is subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've got lots of A-level content coming your way. I'm making more and more each day. So do subscribe so you don't miss out on any more tips or any more papers which I will be posting. And finally, please like the video if you find it useful and share it with your friends, particularly those ones that you want to see get a really good grade. Probably wouldn't share it with the ones that you don't want to get a good grade. All right, bye for now.